Hello everyone and welcome back to the revisionary videos on capital budgeting. Now this is the fourth part of these revision classes. Here we are going to talk about capital rationing. The word rationing simply means you have limited resources and there are lots of demand centers where you have to allocate these limited resources means demand is more and supply is limited. When we talk about capital rationing means the demand of capital is more and the supply of capital is very limited. So what happens when there is a list of various investment proposals, there are suppose 10 investment proposals all giving positive NPVs, you would want to invest in all of them. None of these are mutually exclusive, but you still have shortage of capital, limited capital. So you cannot invest in all of these, you have to prioritize all your investments on a ranking basis and that is what we call as rationing of your capital or simply capital rationing. So capital rationing is again a very very important concept. In examination however there have not been calculative examples on capital rationing but a couple of times they have asked some theory questions definitely. So over here I would want you to take note of this uh, point about capital rationing. Rationing is a process of allocating limited resources over different demand centers in optimal manner. Capital rationing therefore means allocating limited amount of capital over different projects available for investments in a way so as to maximize the overall net present value resulting out of the entire investment. Please refer question number 26 from regular class videos for developing complete understanding about this concept and yes as usual I have not forgotten to give the description which includes the link of this particular video for your reference. Moving ahead the next thing that we talk about is concept of annualization. Now before I go further let me explain what exactly is this concept of annualization. Please carefully understand one thing. Suppose I have series of cash flows, the constant amount of cash flows each year. If I have a series of cash flows and I apply the annuity factor for those cash flows. So annual cash flow multiplied by annuity factor will give me a lump sum amount of present value. That means annual cash flow multiplied by the annuity factor is giving you the total PV of inflow. Instead what you do is when you divide the total PV of inflow by that same annuity factor you will be getting the cash flows on per annum basis. This process of computing the annual cash amounts or annual amounts when the base of calculation was the present value that process is called annualization. Now the question is why do we need annualization? Imagine that you are dealing with two mutually exclusive projects one which has life of 6 years, another which has life of 10 years. If you compute NPV of both the projects and simply decide or simply select one project based on the NPV criteria, your decision may go wrong. Why? Because if a project which has a life of only 6 years cannot have its NPV directly compared with the other project that has life of 10 years. So what we will do, we may initially compute the NPV of both the projects but then divide those respective NPVs by their respective annuity factors. So the project having 6 years of life will be divided by annuity factor applicable for 6 years and the other project by 10 years. In doing so, we will be converting the NPVs of the two projects into equivalent annual NPV or annualized NPV means we are converting that value into a per annum value. The simple concept behind this is when you have annual amounts of cash flows which are or which could be cash inflows or cash outflows, annual amount of cash flows multiplied by annuity factor will give you lump sum present value. So a lump sum present value when divided by that annuity factor will give you the annual amounts of inflows or outflows whatever it is. So here the present value that we are dividing with the annuity factor is the net present value. So the net present value when divided by the annuity factor you get the annualized amount of NPV means how much will be the NPV arising each year means the surplus arising each year we will be able to compute and because the life of the two projects are different they may be giving you different NPVs 
directly comparing the amount of NPVs and selecting the project is not advisable. What you should do is compare the annualized NPV of both the projects. Then irrespective of the number of years of life, if the per annum NPV or the equivalent annual NPV or the annualized NPV is taken as the base of comparison, your comparison is on a per annum basis, which project is better on a per annum basis, which one gives you more surplus on a per annum basis, that project you should select. That is the whole concept of this annualization. And for this purpose, I would ask you to please refer question number 16 and 17 from regular class videos for developing complete understanding about this concept and I have again not forgotten to include the link of this video in the description for your reference definitely. Let us move ahead and now talk about conflict between NPV and IRR basis. Now, I have already explained a bit of this when we were discussing in the previous class, that is previous part of the revision class. I would just recommend you to do one thing. This particular concept, which will also have involvement of indifference rate. That means, imagine two projects where one is better from the viewpoint of NPV, another is better from the viewpoint of IRR. Between NPV and IRR, one thing that we can definitely talk about is NPV is a better base any time because NPV assumptions are better than IRR assumptions. IRR assumptions have some flaws. This I have explained in that video where we talk about reinvestment assumptions involved in capital budgeting. But when it comes to conflict between NPV and IRR, on a generalized basis, I would say NPV is a better basis. Now, to have much clear understanding about this whole point, I would want you to refer a particular video and a particular question from the regular material that is question number 18 for developing complete understanding about this concept. So again, I have given the link of this video in the description. Let us move ahead and now talk about reinvestment assumptions under capital budgeting. This is something that I have been talking about in almost all of my videos and here I would say refer question number 20 from regular class videos for developing complete understanding about this concept. The link of this video also I have given in the description. Then moving to the next concept, a very, very important concept that is concept of MIRR that stands for modified internal rate of return. Now, when you watch the video on reinvestment assumptions involved in capital budgeting, you will come to know that uh, all the cash flows that you are getting from your project as cash inflows, these amounts of cash inflows, you cannot keep it in hand, correct? You have to reinvest this money, then only the NPV, what you have computed initially will arise in true sense. That means whatever be the financial benefit of any particular project, you can get that financial benefit in its entirety only and only when every rupee of the obtained cash flow is reinvested. The question arises at what rate you should reinvest these cash flows. The obvious answer is your usual discounting rate. So your usual discounting rate is the rate at which you should reinvest your cash flows. So your cash flows will be reinvested at that rate. This is the realistic assumption made by NPV method in capital budgeting. But IRR method in capital budgeting that is talking about a faulty assumption over here. If IRR is something different from discounting rate, IRR technique expects that these investments that is the reinvestment of all these cash flows should be made at that IRR rate. Now that is not going to happen in reality. For example, Suppose the rate of return prevailing in market is 15% per annum. That means wherever I go, I will be able to invest my money at 15% per annum. However, luckily I get to know a project which is giving me 25% rate of return. So lucky I was that I got such project which is giving me 25% rate of return. When I receive that money, I will not be able to reinvest the obtained cash flow at that 25% rate. That was one single opportunity which I have grabbed, luckily. But then all my cash inflows, what I further reinvest, the cash inflows have been obtained from that same project, but the reinvestment will not be made at 25% rate, reinvestment will be made at 15% rate. IRR assumptions are faulty because 
IRR technique assumes that these cash inflows will be reinvested at 25 percent and this entire matter I have discussed in details in that video which talks about reinvestment assumptions in capital budgeting. I have also explained what are the flaws in IRR assumptions and to knock off those faulty assumptions you bring the concept of modified IRR. So, if you want to know what is modified IRR, I would simply say you knock off the wrong assumptions of IRR and you try to compute the correct IRR with the correct reinvestment assumption that is nothing but modified IRR. So, in simplest of words if I want to summarize this point, if you face a question where you have to compute modified IRR, what you should do? First you do one thing, obtain all the cash inflows from the project as and when you are getting those cash inflows, start reinvesting those cash flows at the usual discounting rate. Accumulate all these cash flows at the future value and then that future value which will be one lump sum value should be discounted to its present value and that present value should match with your initial investment and the discounting rate what you then obtain will be IRR, but not the IRR with the wrong assumption, but IRR with the correct reinvestment assumption and that correct calculation is what we call as modified IRR. So, what I will do is I will just give you something to refer over here. Please refer question number 21 and 22 from regular class videos for developing complete understanding about this concept and friends this again this particular video link I have given in the description below this particular video. So, let us move ahead and now talk about the last segment of this chapter that is multiple IRR. We would say please refer question number 25 from regular class videos for developing complete understanding about this concept and yes even this particular video link I have given in the description.